Satnam, 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 and happy, happy new year to all of you. Happy 2023. Well, for a lot of us, it is the new year because we celebrate, of course, this uh, new calendar transition from 2022 to 2023. But many of us, especially if you study astrology, and if you're more also connected to the, like the natural algorithms of what nature is for us, for me, especially in the last few years, my new year actually begins in March, right at the winter solstice and also right during the time when airy seasons begin. But it doesn't mean that because the collective is not is participating in all of this, that I myself also don't do some type of rituals or do, do also really pay attention to some things that help me assess and better have guidance in my life. And one of those things that I absolutely do is as I get closer to the end of the year, I start to really study the astrology for the upcoming year for 2023. And so today I want to take some time on this very first podcast episode of season seven of the Sovereign Woman Movement Show and of 2023 to share with you some really exciting, really once in a lifetime transitions, astrological transitions that will be happening in 2023. So you can prepare. And also one event that's going to be happening in 2026 that I've been talking about a lot to my community, because this event will absolutely change humanity, meaning this entire planet, this world that you are experiencing will be completely unrecognizable. And none of the things I share with you are things that are supposed to instill fear in you. In fact, I'm preparing you, I'm helping you so you can see all these amazing emergences and amazing innovations and opportunities that are going to be landing on your lap if you're conscious enough to see them and if you've disrupted the patterns of not feeling worthy to step into a life of abundance, of joy, and also of connection to your inner guidance and to what you're here to do on this planet. So it's really an exciting time to be alive. And I thank you all for being part of this community and welcome, welcome, Satnam. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm really excited to, to share this information with you because if you know me, you know that I'm during my day either studying astrology, studying Kundalini yoga, or reading and studying upon my beautiful spiritual psychotherapy work that I've been a student and teacher of since 2008 which is of course miracles. And so astrology for me has been incredible and preparing for my year beyond a business plan, ladies. And I say this a lot because I come from a business background. I was a real estate broker for more than 15 years, managed hundreds of entrepreneurs under me. And I understand the importance of a strategic business plan. But when you don't really understand that the energy plan meaning your thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and how you're going to manage the stress of the demands of the growth of your business, of the alignment in your relationship, then you're going to self-sabotage. And if we don't take care of your energy plan and look at those patterns that especially prohibit you from elevating into a new level, then you're going to get stuck. And so the energy plan is way more important than anything that you're creating, because as your inner world changes, your outer world inevitably will change as well. And so energy to me is in alignment also with astrology. Astrology is the oldest science in the entire existence of humanity. And it is a science because we were able to look at how as above, so below, these planets have specific archetypes that help us understand ourselves These are amazing tools. There's so many tools out there now that we have access to that help us self-realize. This is one of the biggest innovations, advancements in humankind that we're going to be experiencing. This is one of the prophecies that our ancestors, like the Mayans, who I've been really reading up a lot on lately, they've been contacting me, I feel, through meditation and guiding me to read specific books. One of the books that I've been reading, I think it's over here. It's actually called The Book of Destiny, Unlocking the Secrets of the Ancient Mayans and the Prophecies of 2012. And this has kept me really in tune with what has happened in the last few years, as well as what we can expect. Some of the prophecies are already coming true. But one of the prophecies, of course, is is that we as a human species will become self-aware, meaning we will self-realize and realize that we are God experiencing, God is experiencing herself through us. And I know when I say this, when you say this to someone in the West or to someone who is very religious, 
someone Christian or Catholic that is very dogmatic, this can be blasphemy. You could be crucified for this. So who do you think you are believing that God herself is experiencing herself through you? And But if you say this to someone in the East, like in India, they congratulate you and they tell you, awesome, you finally learned the lesson. You finally have done the work to release your guilt, your shame, to realize that God is not a judgmental God that sits on a throne judging what you're doing all day. That that's just an unhealed, untrained mind and a program that has been invested down to us to keep us in these shackles of not good enough and of not unleashing our potentials. So that's one of the biggest prophecies that's coming into fruition. And a lot of it is because of the technology, not outside of us that we're awakening, but the technology within our heart coherence. This is also one of the prophecies that the Mayans many times spoke about. It's this now ability to come into this heart coherence where you realize that God is experiencing herself through you and you're powerful beyond means because your heart, if you are in full present moment awareness, your heart vibrates an energetic field that has the mass power of creation. It's thousands of times stronger than your brain, but most of us don't have it activated because we haven't done the healing work to help us connect back there. But that's one of the big evolutionary jumps that we're also taking. And now the Mayans are talking about all these prophecies, right, that are now coming to fruition and the astrology and especially of 2023, 2024 and 2025 is out of this world. And it's very supportive for growth and change. 2023's astrology especially has is nothing like 2022's. We truly did go through the last three years, especially through some of the hardest, I think all of us can agree, hardest times of our lives where we had to truly rebirth to truly let an old self die which of course isn't easy we are especially human beings we don't like change you know we like to stay in our habits and if change is forced upon us we freak out and we definitely um don't have the nervous system prepared for the mass amount of change that's even still coming down the pipeline but the last three years they've been they've been very tumultuous and and the astrology tells that story that's exactly why I left my 15-year real estate broker position. I was a real estate broker for 15 years. As I was studying astrology, I knew that in 2020, there was going to be a big event that would occur because of the planets of the way they were sitting that year. That's when we had the big Saturn Uranus uh, uh, conjunction that hasn't happened since like 1512 and the 1500s. And when that happened, it was a big mass uh, awakening a big mass uh, destruction of the of the norms and that's when the pandemic happened I didn't know it was going to be a pandemic I just knew that by 2020 this world was not going to be the same and so as I started to get those downloads and I started to study ast astrology and my chart specifically I basically planned my leave from this um, cycle of my life based on what the astrology was telling me and the last three years, the astrology has been incredibly tumultuous. It's been very, excuse me, very uh, turbulent. That's the word that I want to use. It's uh, not only did we have these once in a lifetime uh, conjunctions, we had Uranus Saturn square for the last two years, which is very uncomfortable, very rebellious, very bringing the truth to the light, very much of a, heal a healing our deepest inner wounds. So it hasn't been a walk in the park. It's been a, a lot of facing our own deepest truths and our deepest fears and our and our wounds that we have not addressed coming to the surface so that we can work th actually through them. But now as we enter 2023, the energy completely shifts and changes. What's very different about 2023, and as we go into what, what's going to happen in your 2023, stick with me because we're going to talk about why it's so important for you to commit to change and transformation why your New Year's resolutions don't stick and what you need to do to make them stick. But 2023 is really all about opportunity. And it is going to have a very rocky beginning. And I'll explain why. But as we get closer to the summertime, especially around June, June 19th, which is actually my husband's birthday, interestingly enough, you're going to start to see a lot of these fruits of your labor and of the harvesting. And we're going to see innovative ways of landing this plane that the feds are trying to do with the economy in a way where they don't have to tank it again, in a way where they can reduce inflation if 
they actually have this soft landing, which I believe is going to happen. So let's start first with the beginning of the year and why right now you actually might feel a little stagnant in starting any new projects, even though for all of us, it's this new year, right? So first and foremost, for 2023, it's the big year of transition. And in January, although many of us are thinking new year, new me, there are two very important things that are happening right now that really are putting up a lot of resistance and really launching any new projects. You, you shouldn't be worried if you haven't launched your, your resolutions or your projects during this first two weeks. In fact, take your time with it. You're probably feeling more tired. You're probably feeling a lot of resistance and confusion, especially, but that's actually normal. Well, I guess you could call it normal because of what's happening in the skies. So during the month of January, we still have two very important planets that are still retrograde. And when planets go retrograde, it's not a bad thing. It just really creates resistance and it helps us or it makes us, forces us to review and reassess what's going on. And because these planets are so important and they create such impact in our lives, we really need to pay attention to becoming more still and paying attention to the signs before we launch anything. Around January 18th, you're going to feel this energy lift itself. You're going to feel more ready to actually do something about the projects that you've set intentions for. The reason that is, is because we have Mars still retrograde in Gemini. Mars is passion. Mars is fire. But retrograde in Gemini, Gemini is the twins. It's the duality. It can cause a lot of confusion. So even though we're passionate about the things we're here to start in 2023, we are reassessing. And we're really creating a solid foundation before we actually take off. The planet is going to go direct on January 12th, and you're going to feel it. When January 12th happens, you're going to feel lighter. You're going to feel like it's time to go, but it won't fully come into full fruition where you're going to have the energy and the vitality to actually do it until like January 18th. And that's because on January 18th, we have the planet Mercury finally going direct. And it goes, this is the planet that goes retrograde the most throughout the year, three to four times a year. Everybody talks smack about Mercury going retrograde. Nothing is good or bad. Think of astrology as like the weather report, and it's giving you information of what the weather is going to be like. And you got to decide if you got to wear a jacket or not, if you got to wear shorts or that dress, or if you want to cover up. That's really what it's about. And it's very specific based on, of course, your astrological chart. So this is an overview of what to expect, especially in the collective consciousness, because as above, so below. So as things start to actually progress and these planets go direct in January, you're going to start to feel a little bit more the ability to actually take off on your project. So January 18th and moving forward, safe for you to launch these new ideas, these new businesses, whatever it is that you're brewing up and you've been brewing up since like the winter solstice especially so once january change shifts we're going to get into uh, the most important month of all of 2023 i'm not going to go into every single month and the astrology i'm just going to go into the probably four or five major things that you need to be looking out for in this year the most important month of all of 2023 is going to be march and here's the difference between 2022 and 2023 uh, the question was, what sign? What sign? Is, what was the question? What sign are you asking about? This is a general um, overview, but what I was talking about to begin with, with the um, the planets that were retrograde, we got Mars retrograde in Gemini, and we have Mercury retrograde as well. So uh, just to get your question right, I want to make sure that I understand it. Oh, you're talking months. Yes, I am talking months. I'm talking 2023 what to expect energetically and astrologically, the major points you need to be looking out for. And then you can go pull up your chart and you can see how these transits actually affect you. So for example, Mars being retrograde in Gemini right now, you can go to your astrological chart. You can see where this alignment sits in your chart and you can see in what house, because there's several houses that affect our business, our careers. You can see what house is being impacted by this transit. And then you can get an even deeper feeling and look as to what exactly you're working on based on these transits. So great question. Thank you so much for that question. Maida says, I was just working on my strategic and energy plan. I need to revamp to align. So grateful. So you're actually really in tune with what's happening right now, Maida. So give yourself grace, especially from now until like January 18th, as these downloads and this alignment becomes more clear. 
because right now we don't want to resist or persist on something that feels like it's blocked, but give yourself until the 18th. I gave, like I tell you all in my, in our community, I gave God the deadline until this day to, to really like help me push through it. What you could be doing right now is recuperating, regenerating, getting a lot of rest so you can have the vitality ready to go by the time the 18th does happen. So that's actually a, a great way to work with this energy. Uh, Janet says, good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Beautiful. Here to assist. Okay. So let's talk about March. Okay. So that's the difference between 2022 and 2023, the big difference. So in 2023 and 2022 and 2021 and 2020, what was happening were these rare alignments, right? The big difference in 2023 is that what's happening is the transitions of planets from one sign to another. That's big. Because some of these planets don't transition takes them 15 to 20 years so sometimes you're in a cycle of 15 to 20 years sometimes you're in a cycle like pluto pluto has a 246 return cycle that none of us as human beings experience however america the united states of america the birth of the united states of america was 246 years to the day in march which means it's going to experience what it's known as pluto return now that's big because for a country to go through something like this, like the last time this happened to like the Roman Empire, when they experienced their 246 Pluto return, there was a complete collapse of the government, a complete collapse of the systems. So this is a complete rebirth. Not, it's not going to happen overnight. And the reason it's not going to happen overnight is because of the major transitions that are happening in March. And here are two very important things to know. First, you have Pluto moving from the sign of Capricorn. It's been in the sign of Capricorn since 2008. I'm a Capricorn. I know what it's been doing in my life. Complete destruction. And if you go back to 2008, that's when there was the big uh, recession, when we had the downfall of the real estate market. But also there was a big rebirth of like cryptocurrency, of central banking systems, right? From 2008, when Pluto has been in Capricorn, it's been rebirthing and renewing anything that has to do with the way we govern ourselves with money with the government so it's been doing a complete rebirth in those sectors and it's exposing the things that don't work that are toxic and that's where the death happens and the rebirth occurs so why wouldn't we want these things that are not working to die Again, people are attached to the similarities. They don't like change. And that's why they get all upset and scared, even for the word recession. Something has to happen. I mean, I was in real estate for more than 15 years. I'm still, I still do real estate, uh, personal investment, right? I'm very vested in the market. So what I said at the beginning is very important. What we need to look out for, the Fed, the Federal Reserve is going to really focus on bringing inflation down. How it's been done before when Pluto changes signs, it moves now into Aquarius. This is a whole different vibe. Pluto in Aquarius will stay in Aquarius for 20 years, but it does like an, a dance. It goes into Aquarius and comes out three times until it stays finally in Aquarius in November of 2024. It stays in Aquarius for 20 years. Aquarius is all about advancements in technology. The last time something like this happened, it was the big advancements in the Industrial Revolution. That's when they created the, the steel machines and they were able to produce that mass effect versus how we used to do it before. So what you can expect when Pluto goes into Aquarius is mass advancements in artificial intelligence, in health, in money, central banking systems. Everything is going to change. The United States of America is going through its Pluto return, but this is a 20-year cycle where things are going to change, of course, not overnight. The advancements are going to start to come, and we're going to see a whole new era for humanity. This is a revolution, even in our mind. Think about what's happening with psychedelic medicine. You know, psychedelic assisted psychotherapy is at its level four, I believe, and being approved by the FDA. You're going to see centers where you're being given therapy, psychedelic assisted psychotherapy, the psychotherapy aspect, of course, the, the speaking with the, with the licensed therapist, but also the medicines like mushrooms, like LSD, like MDMA, like mother ayahuasca. All of that is getting approved federally. So what is that going to do to the level of our healing? 
This is why I believe in the prophecies of the Mayan, because it's inevitable that we'll all self, become self-aware. It's not the answer. I, you all know that I talk about psychedelics a lot because I experienced them in the jungle. It wasn't my solution. It was not my solution. It's the inner work that I do every single day in meditation and sadhana that helps me integrate what occurred in the jungle. But it is a great advancement for humanity, especially for like veterans that are 22 veterans dying every single day or the fentanyl overusage, the overdoses that are happening with drugs. These are things that can instantly impact the brain and the soul that will absolutely change the way we heal. There's also major advancements that they're not talking about in healing as it relates to sound. There's meditation pods that I'm for sure investing in. And that's exactly the center that I'm being called to create a place where people can come use these meditation pods that incubate sound where you can chant like I chant every single day. And that sound reverberates and vibrates right back to you, healing tumors, subconscious mind patterns that don't serve you, healing traumas, all of these things the media is not talking about, but that's Pluto and Aquarius. Pluto and Aquarius also is power to the people, taking the power from the government to the people, people coming together. This is why revolutions are inevitable. Again, it needs to happen. And if you look back at the last transits of Pluto and Aquarius, actually in the 1777, 1778, that was the big revol French revolution when the French took down the French government because they were being toxic. That was also the time when the United States of America was creating its states and its government offices and all of these different things. So power to the people. So again, all of these things need to be destroyed in order for this new era to come into place. And all of this is going to happen and it's gonna be a transition for the next 20 years. Now there's a really big event that's going to happen in 2026 that hasn't happened for 5,000 years that I guarantee you that you need to be preparing for because this event will completely change time, will completely change us as human beings and we're getting so close to it. You will not be doing the same line of work. You will not be dealing with the same problems or issues. Have faith and know that a new era is upon us. And the great prophecies of the Mayans they show mother nature always wins. The light always wins. If you are still stuck on patterns of separation, of not being connected to mother earth, of envy, of jealousy, of not dealing with your ancestral karmic patterns, you're going to suffer. And many more people are going to die. That's just inevitable. Why? Because their frequency does not match this new higher frequency that we're all entering into. And death is not a bad thing. Death just means you're growing up, you're transitioning, you're being transformed into something else. Why? Because you can't evolve and adapt with what's happening here. So what is what would Jesus Christ say when they would come and ask, they would tell him, heal me. And he would say, okay, did you learn a lesson? Did you learn that God doesn't punish you? Did you learn that the lesson is unconditional love? And if the person didn't learn, then God, then Jesus Christ would say, okay, that's okay. Learn through death by rebirthing again. And that's what most, a lot of people are going to be doing. They're going to be learning through death because they're still playing the victim role. They are still holding grievances and not forgiving. They're still not forgiving themselves. And that's what, what's actually creates suffering. A lot of this work is the deep work that we do inside of my academy because to disrupt ancestral karmic patterns, the language of our ancestors is of emotions. And we got to get deep into the guilt of why you even think you're separate from God. We got to get deep into the forgiveness works. And not for you to forgive, but for you to learn to accept. You got to stabilize that nervous system to work through your self-worth issues. Those are the real patterns that we got to deal with in order for you to truly find success in all areas of your life. So this is big. This is a major new era for humanity. So we have March where we not only do we always have um, when, not winter solstice, the beginning of the calendar or the beginning of the year for, for me, for somebody who studies astrology, practices Kundalini Yoga, who's really following the nature, the tunes of nature. The beginning of the year is March as it is. We've got the equinox. We've got the uh, Aries ingression. Now we have Pluto going into Aquarius. You're going to feel that shift. And then the other thing that's happening in March is that Jupiter is going to be going into Pisces, which that has, again, Jupiter has a two and a half year cycle and it takes a long time for it to actually change signs. Jupiter and Pisces is a, is a crazy vibe. I 
I really can relate to the Jupiter and Pisces type vibe because it's more like it's airy, like not from this world, but then Jupiter expands that. So it's going to be so important for you to like ground yourself and to really like what is reality and what isn't right. Or what is my reality, right. That I'm creating. But overall, this Jupiter energy is, is abundance is expansion. It's going to feel rocky March, April, May, because of the other planetary positions where the economy, the stock market, it's going to feel very volatile from January until about June. When June comes around, June 19th, you have such a supportive, beautiful sextile. A sextile is a really positive thing that happens. And it actually happens, like I was saying, on my husband's birthday on June 19th. Jupiter is going to be sextiling Pisces during that time. This is a really, really positive thing because it actually means hope, faith, solutions. This is where I believe the innovations in where perhaps the Fed is going to say not crash the economy to bring down inflation and where they're going to actually come with some kind of solution to land the plane instead of crashing it. And in the energy is very supportive of this from June all the way until next year, which is why I believe that 2023 is actually going to be a year of expansion, of growth, of abundance, if you're in that frequency, if you're only in the fear frequency, which is what the matrix is trying to put everyone into, then that's what's going to, you're going to create and you're not going to see these opportunities. So rocky start to the year, definitely. Economy wise, we'll still be kind of like trying to figure it out. But once the summertime comes, that's when I start to see a lot of expansion and maybe solutions as it relates to all of these different things that we've struggled with as it relates to money and the economy. So there's a lot of other things that are happening in uh, 2023, but those are the major things that I wanted to talk about. So you can see that we have a ton of opportunity. This is our time to get our shit together, <laughs> which means learn to accept ourselves, learn to know ourselves, learn to self-realize and realize that there's great power within to create even from what has never been created. But to do that, we got to ground ourselves and we got to transform and change those patterns that keep going, taking us back to those old ways of living. And this is what it takes us. And this is what will take us into this next thing that I want to talk about, which is why New Year's resolutions always fail. You see, when somebody just says to themselves, I'm going to change, it's a new calendar year. So I'm going to change. I'm going to stop. And they go cold turkey. And I'm not saying cold turkey. Cold turkey has worked for me for some things, but not all things. And I, I would say maybe one or two things it's worked. Most of the time, it will not work because you have to have a really strong mind. You have to have a really, a mind where it's been the patterns that don't exist so thoroughly. The truth is, is that if you don't go deep into the subconscious, and this is where your meditation practice comes in, if you don't change the inner world, it doesn't matter if you tell yourself everyday affirmations of I'm this or I'm that and I'm this, your subconscious mind speaks louder than your conscious mind. Your subconscious mind is running the show 95% of the day, 95% say you're not even conscious and you're on some kind of program. So when we don't change our thoughts, emotions and feelings from within, we continue to create the same world and the outer world. And then we jump onto these victim stories. If you're having challenges, blockages with people, no one is a victim. You played a role in it as well. And if we don't change our vibration, which is thoughts, feelings, and emotions, then what's going to happen is we're going to keep repeating that story with other people not just with that person, right? This is why it's so important to do the forgiveness work of changing the perception of learning to stabilize your nervous system enough to actually learn to accept. Because if you think about it, when are, what is the number one resolution that people make in New Year's? Typically it has to do with their body and losing weight, right? But when you think about people that overeat or any addiction, it's never why are you overeating? Why do you have such lack of free will and discipline it's always why the pain and you see there isn't a gene inside of you that your ancestors gave you of being overweight the reason why we see patterns of being overweight in many lineages has nothing to do with the food that they're eating but why they're eating that food the pain 
That's what ancestral karma is. And that's what epigenetics, the science of epigenetics is. So for example, you come from a lineage where your family has been overweight. The real core reason why they've been overweight because there's been sexual abuse, trauma, something happened in their life where they didn't receive the therapy. So in order for them to cope and deal with the trauma, they're eating. So it's not about dealing with the food. It's about dealing with the pain. When you don't deal with the pain, what happens is that in all of us, there exists a cell or a gene of being overweight. It exists in every single one of us. But if your lineage, there was a history of being overweight, what happens is if you don't manage stress right in your life, this gene will turn on a lot easier in you. You are predisposed to being overweight more than someone that hasn't had a lineage history of being overweight. This is why if you have a history of people that are overweight in your lineage, not everyone in your generation is overweight. And this is common. You'll notice that maybe there's six of them that are overweight, but two are not. Why is that? The two that are not overweight are because these two are managing the stress. They're doing the inner work. If you have a trauma, 25 years old, your dad dies all of a sudden, and now you can't manage your stress, right? That gene is going to turn on a lot easier in you. The gene of addiction, the gene of overeating in you because your ancestors carried that, that same trauma response. Not You're not a victim of your genes. You can change the way your genes express themselves by managing your stress, which means we do the inner work of meditation, not just to prevent disease, but to manage the day-to-day -day stress. And stress is not a bad thing. Everyone thinks it's such a bad thing. When you don't manage your stress, that becomes an illness. Stress means that you're a badass, that the world demands a lot of your services, of your business, that you're thriving in your home, that your children, you know, they, they, they need of your energy. That's not a bad thing. What is a bad thing is you not managing that stress and you not changing the patterns that would then turn on those cells inside of you, those genes that are predisposing you to the addiction or to being overweight. So as you can see, just changing your mind and deciding to just go to the gym one day is not going to change how you're managing the stress. Now, going to the gym is a great way to manage stress. We all know that it helps working out, exercise helps energy flow. But if you don't change the subconscious mind patterns, it's going to be so easy for you to fall off that discipline and that high. So it has to start in your mind. So for me, the way I've been able to commit and I actually enjoy going to the gym. Like there are days where I'm not motivated. I think the last two days I, it was too cold outside for me, you know, and I was like, I don't want to go. Once I get there, I'm like, I really enjoy this. The reason that I can do that is because I have a very disciplined morning meditation practice of getting up at 3:37 in the morning, filling up my system with natural energy, changing my subconscious thought patterns of the laziness or not wanting to go to the gym or the real pain that's happening, which then gives me the vitality to stay disciplined to actually go to the gym three to five times a week, not out of a place of guilt, but out of a place of I'm getting my vessel, my body ready vibrationally so that I could be more of a conduit for the divine so that I could use this vessel as a communication tool with the divine as an expression of creativity in this world, not to lose weight, not to be accepted by society, but to learn to use my body for what it truly is, a temple that houses my consciousness, a temple that allows me to express the God within. And that's when you truly, truly change and transform. And this is going to be vital and key because if you don't start from within, you're not going to see all of the opportunities that I just talked about in 2023. You're going to be writing the frequency of fear of not enough, not worthy, hard work, and you're going to create more challenges in your life because ultimately that's how responsible we are for our life. So start with the mind. 
one of the things that I provided for you that will absolutely change your life is this really awesome e-guide that I created. It's very thorough and it's complimentary. It's free. You can download it by clicking on the link in my bio. I'll also post a link below, below here in the comments. But this is the exact my exact SWC method. And with it, it actually shares with you a very powerful three-minute meditation to disrupt addiction, addictions as it relates to thoughts, substances, uh, subconscious mind patterns, ancestral karmic patterns, all of these different things that you may not even be aware of, but that through practicing this meditation for a minimum of 40 days, you can actually release yourself from them. So click on the link in my bio, download it. It's this beautiful e-guide. It gives you a lot of information about what ancestral karma is, what these patterns look like, how to change them at the level of the DNA and your subconscious mind, and more importantly, the actual meditation work to actually get you there. And of course, if you're going to be doing this for 40 days, I'd love to know. So send me a DM. We'd love to hold you accountable and help you in get realizing your goals and staying in these frequencies of opportunity, of abundance, of expectation versus the what most people sadly who don't tap into what's happening inside fall under for many many lifetimes which is fear guilt shame i'm not worthy and constant contrast that keeps them in these loops of learning karmic lessons or not learning them for sure so check out that link in my bio so you can find out a little bit more and so I will not be going live twice a week yet until after the, the the Mercury goes direct the week of the 18th. And that's not that's one of the reasons. But also the second reason is because I'm going to be traveling. And one of the commitments that I made this year was I would go back to ancient sites like I have been guided to really visit more of the Mayan, Aztec, ancient sites, as well as. Egypt and India and just a lot of different places where uh, my ancestors, my guides are really guiding me. Um, so this this next week, I'm actually going to be in a very sacred location. I'll be in the land of the Mayan in this location known as Palenque in Chiapas, which is like on the border of uh, Mexico and Guatemala. And uh, I'm bringing with me, of course, my tools, my Kundalini Yoga practice to really connect and align and get even more clear on what it is that we are doing, especially as it relates to this movement. So next week, I'll be going live again on Wednesday. I just don't know exactly what time, but I'll definitely be going live to just be sharing with you a little bit more about these ancient prophecies, about some of the things you can expect, some of the biggest changes that are upon us, and how to use specific tools like Kundalini Yoga to disrupt these patterns and to crown yourself so you can truly flourish in this new time and new age for human consciousness. Because what's going to happen in 2026 has not happened for 5,000 years. This is an alignment that literally, if you look back at the calendars, like the Assyrian calendar, and you look at the Egyptian calendar, even if you look at the biblical times, this event basically marks the beginning of time. 2026, Saturn, Neptune, completely changing our reality for humanity. Saturn and Neptune are known as the, the planets that actually control and govern our outer edges. The reality that you and I experience are two of the most important planets of the zodiac astrological system. And as astrologers started to do research, this alignment that's happening in 2026, they realized that this marks the beginning of time for many other spiritual calendar, which means this is a brand new beginning of time for all of us. And this is why I keep repeating this so that instead of you being afraid, you can really see what opportunities are upon us. So you can tap in to these tools, especially the ones that I'm sharing with you all, so that you can truly, truly live a life of sovereignty and of actualization of your deepest dreams and your soul's divine purpose. These are really, really exciting times to be alive. And I hope that you're sensing and feeling that excitement too. We don't want to fall asleep on this. Your soul signed up for this. So now it's time to take action. I'll read some of the comments here before we close off today. For clarification, you said you, you're doing work through meditation and what sounded like either sadhana. Yes. So sadhana, great question. Sadhana is my daily spiritual practice in Kundalini Yoga. 
we uh, call it sadhana, but you you hear this also in many other different spiritual traditions. So my practice, like for me, I'm on day like 640 something where I get up in the morning at 3.37 a.m. Actually, this is part of my academy. If you are part of my group coaching program, I open up a virtual meditation space for you every single morning where you're allowed to join us between 3.37 four or 3 45 in the morning and uh 6 30 a.m and i i my practice is chanting it's called the vocal toning you'll hear me you'll hear me talk a lot about this sacred mantra sacred sound frequency a big part of chanting this for such a long time has been a big a, a catalyst to the connection that i have with god because the chant that we actually, or the mantra that we chant is the divine sound frequency, like a phone line, a connection to the divine. So basically changing my inner subconscious patterns, fueling up with vitality and energy, natural energy to deal and process stress and this deeper knowing of what my soul is here to do. And so, yeah, my daily satna practice is a daily, you could call it meditation practice where um, I basically do the inner work to change these patterns. Your daily sadhana practice could look as simple as three minutes, 11 minutes. It doesn't have to be the two and a half hours that I do, but I am, I'm a teacher. I'm a Kundalini yoga therapist. I, it would, and I have to do this work. I have to stay healthy. I have to stay high frequency because if I don't, I can't serve others. So if you want to get into this line of work, you got to be ready to actually do the work yourself too. That's a big thing also. But your practice, you can start as simple, like I said, as three to 11 minutes in that e-guide that I created. It's a very simple practice. It's a very simple sadhana practice of three minutes a day with daily spiritual psychotherapy prompts to help you really combat and face those limiting beliefs or those ancestral karmic patterns of I'm not enough. I'm separate from God. I'm not worthy. I'm guilty. I'm shameful. So hopefully that answered your question. So if you're new to sadhana, Start with my e-guide, simple daily practice. And for us in Kundalini Yoga, we know that if you practice a meditation for a minimum of 40 days, that's when the real impact starts to change. That's when the brain starts to change. That's when the subconscious mind patterns start to really fluctuate and change the gray matter of your brain changes. We There's scans that we have with brains. So 40 day minimum, if you have some real serious addictive thought patterns or even substance addictions, then keep going three minutes a day, practice it for 90 days, 120 days. I think all of us have three minutes a day to practice a meditation. Simplicity is key. And it's more important if you master one meditation, than try to do like 60 at the same time. So hopefully that helped. And hopefully that motivated you to, to get on some of this um, inner work. Yes, no problem for the e-guide. Larry says, I truly hope people are listening to this message. Continue your growth over there. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for the beautiful, um, kind wishes. And I'm sending you so much love, brother. I know the amazing work that you're doing as well in our community. So may God guide you and protect you and totally allow you to flourish in this new era for humanity. Thank you for what you're doing. And I hopefully we'll get to work together this year for sure. Soon I see it. I see it somehow happening. So <laughs> we will see how that develops. Maida says, going back to the ancestral trauma question. So it's possible our genes could carry the trauma, not necessarily means we went through the trauma. Exactly, Myra. So this is what like um, memories, right? Uh, maybe you think something happened to you, but it was something your ancestors went through themselves. And the gene doesn't turn on unless you're not managing stress correctly. So when we're not managing stress, all of a sudden, all these karmic wounds might come up that we didn't even necessarily go through. So yeah, that is a very good question and a good way to see it. And there is so much science behind that. It's called a behavioral epigenetics. It is real. And so what our job is to make sure we're expressing genes in us that are vibrant of abundance of alignment. And we do that by managing our stress. That's how it happens. Really good question. Really, really good question. Yeah. Janet says, good question, Maida. <laughs> Gotcha. Thank you so much. You got it. I'm, I'm here to help. Sending you so much love, love. So much love, Larry. There's so many, so much greatness that's upon us. This is, we've all been planting so many seeds. And I think you could agree that, especially doing this kind of work, it's like you've had to really trust beyond what the physical eyes are showing you. And now here we are, 2023, time to harvest, time to truly, truly ignite this power within us and to use 
information like the astros, like tools like Kundalini Yoga to self-realize and to crown ourselves. So I want to thank you all so much for participating. Thank you so much for the beautiful questions. Thank you so much for tuning into yourself. That's key. We only need 1% of the human population to do the inner work and to ignite the light within, to change the whole trajectory of this planet. And yes, we are at a crossroads. Anything can happen. Astrology, again, does not predict the future. It gives you an overview of what the weather is going to be like so you can prepare. So what can you and I do? At this point, what Ram Dass says, the only thing I can do for you is work on me. And the only thing you can do for me is work on you. And ultimately, stop working and start to accept yourself. That's true sovereignty. Thank you all once again for your beautiful, beautiful questions. I will see you all again next week, sometime on Wednesday, coming to you from the beautiful land of our ancestors of the Mayans. Be blessed and I'll see you all soon. Happy New Year.